So I'm in the personal museum of Major General Henry Anyidoho, retired. He was a deputy force commander and general um, chief of staff for the Ghana Battalion in Rwanda from 94 to 95. And this is a weapon of genocide. So this, General, so what, exactly this is this, like a dagger somebody used? Yes. This came from Rwanda. tool they use in killing each other. Mm -hmm. So this is something that somebody probably used to, or most definitely used to kill somebody. Yeah, we discovered all this in the camps. Okay, so this is... As, as we went around doing a cleanup in the internal displaced people's camps. Mm -hmm. Wow. Then we discovered all this. We brought quite a number of them home. Mm -hmm. And some are in the Kumasi military museum. So, so, apart so you, you hold it, you see it as if it's a walking stick. Yes. And then when you hold the tip, you hold the tip and somebody, somebody who had, had a wicked plan. Mm -hmm. Because you are working with it like this. Ah. So. And then you send it as soon as he, he holds the end, then he draws this out and uh -huh. he hacks you with it. Wow. Apart from these, these, these daggers, what kind of instruments? They also use used? something like axe. Mm -hmm. Axe short, uh, you know, mm -hmm. axe with a short handle. Mm. You know, something you, you use to chop wood. Yes. Uh -huh. Those type of things. They had a variety of them. But blunt tool, things that will kill you painfully. And that was also one thing which uh, I watched with dismay. They didn't use weapons in, 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 in killing. Mm. But this kind of tools. It's like a block or? Uh, yes, yeah, so that he, the person struggles, suffers until he finally uh, dies. Did you have women doing killing? Did you have children doing the killing as well? I mean, I think children were drawn into it, mm. and maybe women to some extent, mm. in the militia. Especially if they participated in the militia during training, then they were taught that. And, and why? develop an organization like that solely to kill your own nationals, I don't understand. As of today, I still don't understand. So when I, I read the uh, reports, I also understand that they used coded language on the radio, kill the cockroaches, things, things like that, terms like that to, to distinguish. Because they were describing the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, those they were attacking as cockroaches. Mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, Radio. Yes. Milkolin. Milkolin. Mm -hmm. Hate speech was what they were concentrating on broadcasting. Hate speech. So that is also one thing we should avoid. Indeed. Hate speech. Something you know when you say hurts the other person so much that he will feel like killing himself. You know, you want to avoid that. You know, but we, we are practicing that as if it's a joke. You, you monitor some of the, 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 the utterances on radio. Yes. And, and, and Sometimes, when you... and I wonder why. Because there is no need. There is no need at all. Why are you doing that? You, know? you say, I mean, you can play around. In Ghana, we don't hate each other simply because of where you come from. Mm -hmm. No. But sometimes we go to the extent of saying things that one would not expect. Even so, some of those things are said in our parliament. You know? Which is the last place you expect to hear exactly. such uh, speech. These are people who are representing the interests of all of us. Should be discussing things that help us to develop, not things that divide us. But uh, I don't know. Do you think... Uh in Ghana, we, we really sometimes play with fire. We, 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 we don't take some of these things very seriously because we think, oh, Ghanaians can never do this. Ghanaians cannot behave like Liberians. Ghanaians cannot behave like Sierra Leoneans. Ghanaians are too peaceful. No, Rwanda can never happen here. As a soldier with many years of experience, over 40 years, and having witnessed Rwanda, what do you say to people like that who are overly optimistic about the nature of Ghanaians? I think they should think realis realistically. We have conflicts coming too close. 
you know, what is happening in our neighboring, especially to the northern part. This is the hardest element that is coming into conflict. Those who were not there before. Mm -hmm. So if you are better organized, better trained, and looking after yourself, then you could avoid some of those things, you know. But to spend time on hate speech, to degrade the other person, derogatory statements, the ability to offend him, to the extent that, you know, at one time, people stood up in our parliament as if they were going to fight each other. Mm -hmm. There was an event like that. Indeed. Why should he be? That's not why we elected them. We wanted them to go there and do serious business so that we can move forward. Let them do this. Let others play their part, like I said. The farmers, if they stop farming and they are busy fighting, we're in trouble. We, we, we'll be in trouble. <laughs> the water is, they provide us water we drink. Electricity Corporation, today we are crying about lights going off. But if they don't do their job, then it means they deny us that service. So everybody should do his well or his well, and then we are on the move. I actually pray to God that what my troops and I witness in Rwanda should never happen here. But we should work towards it. We should work towards unite, united front all the time, doing things together. And those that govern should know that they are not governing one part of the country. They are governing the whole country. They should be seen to be doing that. They should be seen to be doing that. If you don't do that, then of course you are not playing the role you said you were going to play. That's, that, that's my message. Those ones you see inside there mm -hmm. are the various plaques that normally you are given when you are. You see certain things with a wooden background. Yes. Yeah. I see that. And I see your book, Guns Over Kigali, over there. Yeah. Yes, indeed. This is a book you wrote based on your experiences. And this in my hand here is uh, your uniform. Yes. This is... Uh, my name is Stephen Ritten. Yeah, I can see you right there, Anyidoho. For those who don't know, what does Anyidoho mean? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's my, my, my grandpa, my family name. Uh -huh. And I, I'm told that uh, it used to be an ancient time, a place they went to seek for what should I say, protection. Mm -hmm. and, and that house was called like that. So anybody who went there to seek for that protection came out with the name Anyiruho. That's why Anyiruho's do not come from one particular town uh, in the Volta region. They are dotted all over. It means their great-great-grandfathers must have gone to the same house to seek for protection. Whatever protection, I don't know. Do you believe but, in the... But you know, Anyi itself is B. It's a B, yes. And they said, Anyi do ho, menya tatamu. Like, you have a B in each side, you really want to harvest the, the honey. Mm -hmm. But it is difficult for you to harvest Indeed. it. Indeed. Uh -huh. Because the bees will sting oh, you. Okay, yes, they won't leave you alone. <laughs> yes. But uh, I think if you believe in the power of names, uh, your interpretation of the name being like a place of refuge, um, I think kind of was a prophetic one. Because um, in Rwanda... <laughs> You help people. I mean, without yes. your team, your forces there providing some form of refuge, people would have would, would have. That's why Radis would never forget, forget us. Mm -hmm. they, they really today appreciate even those who were not in the country, those who were not born. They said openly that we were not here, but we were told that you were the one. In fact, if you go to Kigali, you're going through the museums, you will come across my picture and the picture of Ghanaian soldiers somewhere in one of the places by all means, and they will talk about us. And they will continue to do so. Because, and that, of course, has built a lot of relationship. Our military, they interact. Politically, you know, now Rwanda has a high commission in Ghana. Mm -hmm. He used not to be there. Yeah. So we are relating to each other in several ways. As a result of that humble sacrifice we made, and of course, these, these are the results of it. Indeed. And of course, there are planes fly, fly here exactly. re regularly, providing that link between exactly. us and Rwanda. I'm really happy that you have decided to create a museum. To... Which is in the making. Yes. No, no, but it's, it's a great idea because then I think you're a man of records and you always want people to know what has happened so that yes. the 
upcoming generations can can also remember what took place, and it's it's a really sterling effort that you have and made. And the, the last place I served is Darfur. Mm -hmm. That's where we, I brought that one from. After Rwanda. Yes, after I left after, the army. Um, um, yes. So you they, served they, there as a civilian. The, the UN engaged me. Okay. I served there as a civilian mm -hmm. at the level of assistant secretary general. Okay. That was how I finally retired from the UN. So what does this 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 legacy of Darfur uh, mean? Yeah, I think from the various ethnic groups mm -hmm. and the things they use. Mm -hmm. So the, one of the uh, uh, battalions put this up together and gave to me. Okay. When I was leaving. So it's very symbolic. Yes, they are national uh, tools or whatever they use mm -hmm. to decorate themselves or whatever. I'm seeing a lot of things here, and I want you to explain them to me as a civilian. Yes. So, uh, okay, so this is, this is your T-shirt. First Infantry Battalion, ready and willing. So yeah. this, this is a... Uh, what is this? It's a web equipment. You see the belt around your waist? Uh-huh. With the position for you to keep water bottle. Okay. The water bottle is even hanging there. So would I, how would I wear it like this? Bring it. Let me show you. <laughs> Actually. Ah. Okay, that's a water bottle. Yes. Okay. The the belt itself is here. Ah. You so know, around my waist. You know, uh -huh, okay. Around your waist. Okay. And then these other ones mm -hmm. will be around your shoulders. Okay. This ones will be around your shoulders. Okay. And, and this the water bottle will come somewhere at your back. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. So this is the belt. Yes. Okay. This belt. Oh, I can see the buckle. Yes. Ah, I see. So something like this. Yes. I wear it like this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's it? Yes. And okay. And these are pouches and you see the water bottles? Water bottles are there? At each place. Ah, it's right there. It's about there. Okay. And so this and is... This one, you put uh, uh, the ammunition, your magazines. Okay. Right there. My yeah. for, my, for my gun? Yes. My water for my drinking? Yes. Okay. And I'm good to go. <laughs> and, and then the other one, the bigger one, uh -huh. is there the pack into which you can pack a few okay, this. things to carry with you. This? Yes. You need to be a strong person to be a soldier. Oh yes. <laughs> so a lot of things can go into that. What 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 what, what would go inside typically? Your, imme your immediate needs. Okay. Things to keep you survive. Okay. Uh -huh. And this would be one around your body. You carry it at the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you are when you are in full gear. Uh huh. Military. Ah, uh, I see. That. It's almost like a, a brack sack. Exactly. So you, you put this behind you. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Let's go. I pretend to be a soldier. It's right there. Yeah. Okay. And it will have been loaded fully. With, uh, and then we run. Oh, yes. We... <laughs> well, if you are going to run, if weapons are firing, if you won't run, then stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Oh, let me take the weapon out of the way. Put this here. What else is of interest here? That oh, This is your shoehorn. Is this your shoehorn? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. But it's just some it's de de decorative. It's fragile decoration. Okay, and this is a Motorola you use at some point in time? The, yes. Telephone, you know, because I'm a signal officer, mm -hmm. I, I also guarded various types of phones that were used in the army. Mm -hmm. You know, just for administration. Yes. Until we got to where we are today. So I keep different types of phones, which will also be displayed by themselves in the museum so for as a proof of being yeah. a signal of exactly and the progress in technology exactly the young people will not understand phones like this exactly yeah <laughs> so there's some phones there let's see if there's any more equipment down here that i can unearth okay so this is more of what i, I wore i think behind this this is part of the first one that you wore ah aha uh -huh. okay the other one is also for, for, for a different match okay and the technical term for this is what webbing yes yes Okay. We call that one actually a haversack, the one at the back. A haversack. The one behind me yes. is a haversack. Yes. Okay. All right. This is your major uniform. The major general. Major, oh, major general. Oh, uh, this is, this is your, your, when you retired. Yes. This is what you wore when That's you retired. That's what I, I wore. Okay. okay. A major general is uh, in terms of stars. That's a two-star general. Is that correct? Two-star. Okay. 
So where are the two stars? Today they have changed them. So what is it now? They, they, they are wearing, which I myself am not very well informed about. <laughs> but during our time, if you become Major General, then you wore one star mm -hmm. on the cross sword. Okay. If a Lieutenant General, then it will be two stars on, on the cross, cross sword. sword. But now... Things are changing? The things, the insignia, they wear so many things on the shoulder, which I don't quite follow. I see here, this is, this is your biography, your autobiography. Yes. Uh, my journey. My journey, yes. Um, in terms of chronology, which came first? Guns of Kigali? Guns of Kigali. And came. then this one came, let's see, 19, 2010. 2010. Same publisher, Sub-Saharan. Yes. Okay, so this tells you your story from where you were born, where we are right now, Tanyiga. Exactly. All the way through to various places that you went to study, uh, military academy, you, you went to the, to US, the US to, for your training, and this is your whole story, how a rural boy traveled his course of life. Yes. Uh, every step of the journey has its own story to tell. Read the book, discover a way of life, know how to select and maintain your aim in life, and reflect on your own steps and draw your own conclusions. So there's a, a quote here from Romeo Dallaire, your force commander, yes. who wrote something. And let me read what he said. He said, more than anything, this is the story of a man who I have come to know and love as colleague and a friend. We stood together in Kigali through some of the most terrible days of a genocide near the end of the last century. I never once doubted his loyalty and support. Au contraire, he was the bravest of the brave in reaffirming that our UN mission would not be defeated. And in volunteering, he and his 400 strong contingent of proud and resourceful Ghanaian soldiers, tens of thousands of Rwandans survived the slaughter. In all he did, Henry Anidoho showed himself to be a true professional and an officer who exemplified the traditional military virtues of courage, fortitude, endurance, and good humor in adversity. In this book, he shows another side of himself. I recommend this book to all who read it as the voice of a man worth listening to from one author to another. Because, of course, Romeo Dallaire, General Romeo Dallaire, was the author, or is the author of Shake Hands with the Devil. Exactly. Uh, he's, he's also, his account also of his experience in Rwanda. So this is a book you want to find. My journey, every step. Uh, go to Book Nook and you will find it. There he is there. Thank you so much. You are most welcome. I have enjoyed my time here, stepping back into time. And uh, maybe I'll end with one, uh, something here. This is your hat. What's the story behind this hat? This one is from Australian Army. Okay. When we are on the operations, Different contingents from different countries donate some of their military things to you to take home, mm -hmm. just for for keep for remembrance. Ah, so that's from what Australian, Australian Army. Army. Okay, excellent. In fact, the the Gold Coast Army used to wear something like yes, this. Yes, I've seen pictures like that. Yeah. Yes. Of course, when you joined the army, it was already it was still in the Gold Coast. They were yes. yes. No, no. No, you, you, joined... you, you, were, you were independent already. Yeah. Yes. Just freshly independent. Yes. Yes. 57, then 61, I joined. Exactly. Yes. Okay, uh, what else can I see here? This is your ceremonial yes. outfit. This is a general's? No, that's, uh, I think, when I was at the rank of a colonel. Okay, yeah. colonels, okay. And what are these? They, they were just uh, things given to us for a memento or so from okay. various countries as you travel along. Indeed. I they see, may I... not even come. Which one is this? This one Look at is... That. Uh, no, the medal. This medal, what? This one, inside here. No, the one no. facing you, no the medal, the, door the one. The door handle. Okay, okay, okay. So this is uh, United Philippine contingent. Okay. National so, so headquarters, they, Philippine National Police. So they must have given that to me mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. I visited their battalion. Okay. So the little bits of things like that. Okay. Are those that I really want to arrange in some methodical manner? Indeed. I see a, a, a whole host of swords here. Yes. Different types of swords from different armed forces. Okay. Also, you were given some as a present. Okay. You know, a gift from your colleagues. Mm -hmm. And walking sticks. Mm -hmm. well, you know, at one time I commanded, uh, I was in military academy and training school, looking after all the training schools in the Abbey. Mm -hmm. And the jungle warfare school in Achansi was one of them. Ah. And that's where all these walking sticks come from. Okay. This one like that. Okay. The one with the camouflage. Mm -hmm. 
I see it. This one. Yes. This one. Yeah. You know, you, they design something strange for you to carry <laughs> so that you can really look uh, <laughs> a jungle. <laughs> It's made from wood. It's made from wood. Yes, yes. yes. But but given they, the camouflage, they just cut the yes. Yeah. So uh, so have you done some jungle warfare training before? Yes. Okay. What was it like? Once once I was in charge of the school, I had to go through. It's a very a very good training. Do you eat. What's the strangest thing you've eaten in, in, in jungle warfare? <laughs> People talk about all those things, but <laughs> you don't eat anything strange. Uh, well, you may not know. The, the thing is, you're hungry. You want to eat food. <laughs> so once you are giving me food, you eat it. <laughs> what they, what, that's what they call jungle survival. Okay. When things are not normal and you still have to survive. Yes. Then they teach you how to, when you come across water, a river water, how do you know that it is safe for you to drink? How do you know? When you see living things moving in it. Ah, yes. Because it means it, it, it's yes, sustaining life. The living things are in it. You can also pour it into a water bottle. Then they give you a purifier you have. Some tablets you can put inside. Okay. Shake it, hope it hopefully it will kill the germs. And you don't get diarrhea and die. Exactly. <laughs> so if you see worms and frogs inside, it's good. Yes, it means it's, uh, <laughs> you can survive. You can survive. <laughs> <laughs> so when the food comes, the meat comes, you don't ask where the meat came no, from. No, 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 no. <laughs> you, are, you are hungry, you want food, you are given food. But did you suspect that there were snakes or frogs? Oh, I, they tell all sorts of strange stories. But I, I don't want to believe in those things. You just want to eat. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I think I'm, my curiosity... Have you ever sat on a camel? I see a picture of a camel there. No. No. Okay. That, <laughs> I think I picked from one of the tourist okay. places in Sudan All right. or Ethiopia. Okay. All right. Well, Gerald, thank you so much uh, okay. for a sneak peek into your museum. And that picture there, I was given... Yes, we'll end on that one. Uh, awarded here in Ghana. Okay. They what? call it Excellence... Million? Uh, okay. Excellence Awards? Yes. Okay. Uh, they used to do it every, is it every two years or something. Is it, is it Millennium Excellence Awards? Millennium is uh, awarded by this group of people. One of them died. He was a journalist, a mm. tall mm. guy man. What, what was he called? Atukwe Okai. Atukwe Okai. Okay, the poet. And others, yes. Okay. They, 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 he and some other people. Mm -hmm make this uh, group of people who award and uh, every year or every time they select a group of people okay mine was for peace okay the other people get it for other other fields of endeavor. indeed indeed yeah. indeed well thank you uh, on that note of peace uh, from me to a decorated peace uh, keeping um general i want to say thank you so much for giving us a, a tour of your museum thank you it's a pleasure. Museum to be. Yes. It's a, I can already see it as a museum, so I'll, I'll drop it to be. <laughs> Thank you so much. God yeah. bless.